I wish I didn't have to make this video. I hate that we have to talk about this because of what it means. But with Ruth Bader Ginsburg dead and 48-year-old Amy Coney Barrett apparently set to replace her for decades to come, conservatives are on the verge of having a 6-3 supermajority on the Supreme Court. And with that, the power and desire to limit abortion rights throughout the country, to overturn or block LGBTQ rights, to maintain voter suppression tactics, and to undo anything a future Democratic Congress might pass. Unless you're a Christian nationalist, this really is the nightmare scenario. I don't know what Democrats can do to realistically stop her confirmation, and that means before the election, Amy Coney Barrett will likely become a Supreme Court justice. And I fear that even if Democrats win back the Senate and win the presidency, and they're able to withstand whatever obstacles Trump will throw their way before Inauguration Day, they won't have the political will to expand the courts, which they should, and add three or five or seven justices to the Supreme Court and many more seats to lower courts in order to offset all the unqualified, unvetted people Republicans have jammed through over the past few years. In the coming days and weeks, you're going to hear a lot about the selection of Barrett and what it means for the courts and the future of our country. But I want to focus on one aspect of her selection that really deserves a closer look. Her religion. What is it? Why does it matter? And is it fair game to even ask about it? Because a lot of people don't want Democrats to raise the subject. Republicans are practically salivating over the idea that her religion may become a political issue. Barrett is a conservative Catholic. She taught at Notre Dame Law School for 15 years. She worked as a clerk for Justice Antonin Scalia, one of the most conservative judges in modern history, who, if you're a liberal like I am, was essentially on the wrong side of every major case in the past couple of decades. She told a law school class during a commencement speech that their ultimate goal should be, and I quote, building the kingdom of God, unquote. If she's confirmed, six of the nine justices will be Catholic. And that's not even including Neil Gorsuch, who was raised Catholic but now calls himself an Episcopalian. So that's what we get as a punishment for not electing Hillary Clinton in 2016. Or, to be honest, Al Gore in 2000. Now, Barrett was confirmed to a court of appeals in 2017. And something we've only learned since then is that she actually belongs to a smaller Catholic sect called People of Praise, which isn't formally affiliated with the Catholic Church. The group raises a lot of eyebrows if you know nothing about them, but it's not nearly as frightening when you dig in a bit deeper, so let's talk about that. Here's what you may find in articles about the religion. The women in the group are called handmaids, which doesn't sound great, though they would tell you it means something positive. They will also say they were using the word handmaid long before Margaret Atwood's book The Handmaid's Tale came out, and they've since shifted to using the phrase women leaders instead. They also believe husbands are the heads of their wives and have authority over the family, which I know sounds disturbing, but it's also no different from what many evangelical churches teach. They speak in tongues. They believe God can heal you. They believe in the idea of prophecy, which is all strange, but again, that is also what many Pentecostal churches teach. They apparently tell members to sign a loyalty oath to each other, but it's not really clear what that means in practice or that it leads to any problems in the real world. I think part of the mystique is that there are only about 1,700 adult members of her sect total. People are always scared of the unfamiliar. But I'll be honest with you, the people of praise thing doesn't really concern me that much. Even saying she wants to build the kingdom of God isn't that scary if you're fluent in Christianese. It's just their way of saying they want to build a better world. Barack Obama said something similar himself. The worst things people point to about Barrett's group seem to fall in the category of, 
weird religious stuff that never makes much sense to outsiders. I mean, if you knew nothing about basic Catholicism, the idea of infant baptism might seem bizarre to you too, because it is. But as any Catholics will tell you, it's a ritual that has meaning for them, but it's harmless to outsiders. Most religious rituals are like that. So if you want to go down the path of mocking Amy Coney Barrett for her faith, I'm just saying there's no shortage of politicians and judges who hold religious views that are also ridiculous. There are plenty of members of Congress, Democrats and Republicans, who think a wafer turns into the literal body of Christ, that Jesus died and then came back to life, and that an actual devil exists. My point is, I don't get why anyone would think her religion is any stranger than, say, Mitt Romney's or Joe Biden's. But here's what does concern me, and I think this is what should concern you, and I think this is what should concern the senators who will ultimately have to vote on her. I worry that her faith influences her decision-making. I wouldn't personally care about her beliefs otherwise. Here's an example of what I mean. In 2005, as a law student at Notre Dame, she co-wrote an article for the Marquette Law Review about Catholic judges involved in death penalty cases. The Catholic Church opposes capital punishment, but the article asked, if the law allowed for it, what should a Catholic judge do? Barrett wrote, We believe that Catholic judges, if they are faithful to the teaching of their church, are morally precluded from enforcing the death penalty. That means that they can neither themselves sentence criminals to death nor enforce jury recommendations of death. Whether they may affirm lower court orders of either kind is a question we have the most difficulty in resolving. In English, she's saying those judges should listen to the church, not the law. It doesn't matter if you're for or against the death penalty. I'm against it, just like she seems to be. But she's still saying Catholic judges should allow their faith to take precedence. She also wrote in the conclusion of that paper, Judges cannot, nor should they try to, align our legal system with the church's moral teaching whenever the two diverge. They should, however, conform their own behavior to the church's standard. Perhaps their good example will have some effect. That's an interesting way to find a compromise. She's suggesting church and state must be separate, but a Catholic judge working for the state should follow the standards of the church. That's such a huge gray area, though. I want to know where she draws the line. It's not hard to connect the dots and see how Barrett could also find harmony between her church's anti-abortion stance and a Supreme Court decision to overturn what many conservatives have referred to as another holocaust. In fact, in that same article, Barrett referred to abortion as always immoral and said that abortion takes away innocent life. In a separate 2013 speech, she said life begins at conception. So would she distance herself from those positions since Roe v. Wade is the law of the land? It doesn't seem like it. She wouldn't have been nominated if Republicans had any doubts about her answer. In fact, in that same paper, she wrote about how the late Justice William Brennan, who was also Catholic, once said he would always be guided by the Constitution and our laws, not his religion. And Barrett and her co-author wrote that they did not think this was the proper response for a Catholic judge to take with respect to abortion or the death penalty. That is disturbing to hear from someone who is about to be in a position where she could overturn Roe v. Wade and isn't necessarily bound by precedent. So her position is a legitimate question for senators to ask during her confirmation hearings, even though it revolves around her faith. And this is a point that is worth repeating. It is not anti-Catholic to ask her about what guides her decision-making. It is absolutely fair game to ask if she still agrees with her thinking from that law article, and if that mentality would apply to abortion rights. I'm not saying she wouldn't just lie and say, of course not, but the question is necessary. Here's another concern. 
In 2013, Barrett, who is now a professor of law at Notre Dame, wrote that legal precedent, known as stare decisis, could be called into question if the judge felt a previous decision was wrongly decided, which could literally be whenever they want. I know this is a mouthful, but she wrote, Soft stare decisis helps the court navigate controversial areas by leaving space for re-argument despite the default setting of continuity. It's one thing to overturn settled law when we're talking about advancing civil rights and abandoning racism or sexism or bigotry, but it is troubling to know a judge is fine with overturning long-standing abortion rights or even same-sex marriage, rights that took a long time to achieve and which could suddenly disappear now with one Supreme Court ruling. Democrats should not vote against her because she's Catholic. That's stupid. They're not doing that. But they absolutely should press her for answers about her beliefs regarding if settled law ought to be overturned, and when that applies, and when her religion might override the law. Now, they need to be smart about how they do this. They need to be strategic. In 2017, during Barrett's first confirmation hearing for a seat on an appellate court, California Senator Dianne Feinstein pointed out her past writings, the ones I just mentioned. And then she said to Barrett, The dogma lives loudly within you. And that's of concern. Feinstein was saying that there's good reason to think Barrett would put her faith above the law, which is a valid concern. But Republicans have just seized on those words and are now acting like Democrats are anti-Catholic for even questioning her about her faith. There is nothing Republicans love to do more than accusing Democrats of being anti-religious, even though pretty much every elected Democrat is very religious. Nebraska Senator Ben Sass said Barrett's connection to people of praise was nothing more than a Bible study. That's not true. And referred to any criticism of it as ugly smears that are a combination of anti-Catholic bigotry and QAnon-level stupidity. It's not bigoted or stupid to ask questions about her decision-making. Former White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders laughably said in a tweet, If liberals actually cared about empowering women, they'd be applauding Judge Amy Coney Barrett, a working mom with impeccable legal credentials, not denigrating her with bigoted attacks on her Christian faith. Yeah, ladies, why aren't you celebrating the idea of forced birth in any situation? You know, I don't recall Republicans applauding Hillary Clinton, a working mother and grandmother with an unparalleled resume. Maybe I missed the memo. Tennessee Senator Marsha Blackburn had maybe the dumbest response, saying in a tweet, In Chuck Schumer's America, only atheists can be Supreme Court justices. Jesus Christ. Just to point out the obvious, Justice Stephen Breyer is Jewish. Schumer wasn't in the Senate then, but I promise you he would have voted for him. Justice Elena Kagan is Jewish. Schumer voted for her. Justice Sonia Sotomayor is Roman Catholic. Schumer voted for her. Ruth Bader Ginsburg was Jewish. Schumer wasn't in the Senate when she was confirmed, but obviously he's a fan. And Merrick Garland, who should have been on the Supreme Court, is Jewish, and we know how Schumer feels about him. By the way, there are no open atheists on the bench. There's honestly never been one in modern times. Marsha Blackburn is a Christian liar. And by the way, there would be nothing wrong with having atheists on the Supreme Court. It's about damn time. We would be better off having people on the bench whose reasoning couldn't possibly be influenced by their faith because they're not part of any organized religion. Though again, there's nothing wrong with religious people on the bench if they can separate their faith from the law. I want to make one more point about this idea of Democrats being anti-Catholic since the Fox News crowd has been jumping on it for days. Even commentator Hugh Hewitt wrote on Twitter, Democrats and blue bubble media have begun to voice their anti-Catholic bias. That anti-Catholic bias is deep and enduring. 
Just to state the obvious, since Hewitt doesn't know how the internet works, the 2020 presidential candidate Joe Biden is Catholic. The 2016 Democratic vice presidential candidate Tim Kaine was Catholic. The 2012 Democratic vice presidential candidate Joe Biden was Catholic. The 2008 Democratic vice presidential candidate Joe Biden was Catholic. The 2004 Democratic presidential candidate John Kerry was Catholic. The current Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, is Catholic. The chair of the Democratic National Committee right now, Tom Perez, is Catholic. The first Supreme Court pick from President Obama, Sonia Sotomayor, was Catholic. Several members of Obama's cabinet, Kerry, Perez, Hilda Solis, Julian Castro, were Catholic. Of the 235 House Democrats elected in 2018, 87 were Catholic, more than a third. 60% of all the Catholics currently in Congress are Democrats, and the only Catholic president in U.S. history, John F. Kennedy, was a Democrat. Democrats are not anti-Catholic. You have to be purposely ignorant to pretend that they are, which is to say a lot of Republicans are pretending they are. When it comes to Barrett, senators must do their job and ask tough questions questions about her writings, which were religious in nature. They should also question things she said over the past few years while she sat on a court of appeals. In that time, she's opposed a woman getting an abortion even when her fetus had a severe fatal abnormality. She's gone against an underage girl getting an abortion without telling her parents, even if a judge believed she was mature enough to make that decision. She has signed a petition opposing the Affordable Care Act, saying it was a grave violation of religious freedom because religious employers initially had to cover birth control as part of their employees' insurance packages, which means she would likely overturn Obamacare, putting countless people with pre-existing medical conditions in jeopardy. That case is on the Supreme Court's docket very soon. Even now, during the pandemic, she's voted to exempt churches from a ban on large gatherings in Illinois, even though the ban applied to other large gatherings. She's pro-life and pro-COVID, apparently. Look, this is someone who will absolutely overturn abortion rights given the opportunity. If there's a conservative position to take, she's going to take it. That's why she was placed on the Federalist Society's list. That's why Donald Trump is nominating her. Republicans would not have pushed so hard for her if they were not absolutely certain she was anti-abortion and in their pockets on every other issue they care about. And that's why decent senators should vote against her confirmation. This is not just hypothetical. We deserve to know if Barrett thinks religious exemptions should be permitted when it comes to health care or if religious business owners should be able to discriminate in the workplace, or if taxpayers should be funding religious activity, or if religious freedom applies to everyone, or if public school officials can promote or sponsor prayers. Those cases have either recently come before the court or may soon come up before the court. Too much is at stake to let her on to the Supreme Court right now. So if you live in a state where your senator may be on the fence or in a tough re-election campaign, they need to hear from you. They need to be told how you feel and why you don't want her on the court and why their decision to confirm her will lead you to vote for their opponent. I know you think they won't listen to you, but that's exactly the sort of call they take seriously. Nothing will change if they think there are no consequences for their bad decisions. Democratic senators have some big decisions to make, but we can do our part too. That's not anti-Catholic. That is being a patriot.